Hi everybody, this is Tom from Rocket Restorations and today we're going to do basically part two on our Superbird video. So if you didn't watch the first one, I definitely encourage you to go back in our channel and watch it. It's the uh, Superbird Barn Find video. Uh, a little background real quick. We found this in Spokane, Washington. It had been sitting since 1984 in that garage. Pretty crazy. Uh, it was a uh, guy painted it, took it apart, and then it never got put back together. And we ended up having to buy 12 cars from the estate. So uh, what we're doing here, so my, my plan was to spend the whole week on this. But uh, unfortunately, we uh, we had to go back to Spokane to get the rest of the parts for this thing and go move some more cars. So we basically have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday this week to, to see if we can get this thing running. So and that's my goal. We want to see if we can get this thing running by Friday. So we basically have three days. And I've already killed half of today doing other stuff. So um, basically what I'm going to do now is go gather parts and get all that stuff together and basically see what we have. All right. We're back at the scene of the crime. I, uh, apparently the Habitat for Humanity people came through here and kind of picked this place over like locusts. And, uh, yeah, so basically I got a call from the estate guy saying, you need to get back over here and get your parts before everything else is gone. So we had to make a new trip over here. Uh, so yeah, we're going to work on getting the rest of these parts. Um, and, uh, see what else we can find. I think we're still missing a few Superbird parts. So we're trying to find that. That's a 65 Chrysler, uh, front course port, uh, Big black oil pan, a couple single snorkel air cleaners, and we're digging through the pile back here. We didn't even have a chance to go through last time and see what we can find. Um, yeah. And it's not quite as hot as it was last time, which is good, but it's uh it's still warm. There's a lot of gas tanks back there. Hello darkness, my old friend. Except you're not a friend. You're really steep stairs in a super hot attic. Oh, back once more into the breach, dear friends. I mean, I think I got everything up here last time, but I'm sure I missed something. I just found a big box of vintage bulbs, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I totally missed some stuff. This is cool. Excel electronic conversion kit and uh, Excel hood pin kit. Kind of cool vintage stuff. I mean, I'm not putting that on a super bird, but it's kind of neat. All right, Evan decided to drain the party up here. He didn't really make it up here last time because we basically beat him into a pulp and his hip hurt. See, this is why you keep on digging, because here's all the seatbelts with the Superbird. You need those. Those are not cheap. We need to grab those. Not Superbird parts, but uh, I think that's 55 Imperial stuff. So it's not easy to find anymore. I'll take it. I found some more good stuff in the basement. Parts books. We like parts books. Well, spent a couple of hours at the house. Got the attic mostly cleaned out. Went through most of the scrap pile in the back. Still got to finish doing that. The good news is I sold three of the 65s today. Yay. I basically gave them away. It was a thousand bucks for all three of them, but uh, that's way too cheap, but they needed to go. So I didn't want to bring them all home. So they're gone. Ooh, Scott got a demon. It's a uh, 318, originally gunmetal gray with an eight and three quarter. Coolest part is the interior. It's like plaid or paisley or houndstooth. I don't know what they call it, but it's cool. This thing was sitting in the garage, like half a mile from his house. Last tab to 92. Pretty cool. The guy who had it, his uh, grandpa gave it to him because he was born in 1971, I guess. Something like that. I don't know. Cool car. He got a good price on it too. We're just helping Scott put his four post lift together. We're almost done. We're just putting the release rods in now. Putting these lifts together is kind of a pain, but it's a lot nicer when you got three dudes. Ooh, Scott got a new toy. So uh, if you watched our last video, uh, we showed on top of this lift was a, and you, if you didn't watch the last video, you should watch the last video. It was the us getting the Superbird and all the stuff out. Yeah, the, on top of this lift was a 71 Hemi Cuda that Rocket restored. Uh, this is a, he traded it for this one. This is a 71 Cuda. It's a real Cuda convertible, uh, BS27N, 3834 bro. But uh, it's got a Hemi, it's a, got a Hemi in it now. It's pretty cool. He just wanted a car he could drive. All right, well, I'm tired. We all have a long, long day tomorrow, going to bed. Stay tuned. But still use the and now we're watching my videos to make sure all my videos will be on Scott's feed every time he watches YouTube in here. I'm totally a license plate guy and thoroughly approve of this license plate. That's a real California plate that Scott got in like the 80s, I think. All right, next morning, we got the Saratoga loaded up at Scott's. So we can get that later. Uh, we're going to go in the basement and get the parts books. Our buddy, the Hound's back. He does not like diesel trucks. Every time we start a diesel truck, it's... 
Okay, we're gonna get the parts books out first so we can make a nice solid base in the truck and then put all the other stuff on top of it. Okay, that's cool. Found that in the basement. Evan's having way too much fun with the flag. All right, we're trying to go through the scrap pile here and I just, all this stuff's gonna go away if it doesn't get saved. So I can't save all of it. We're trying to save a few pieces here at least. Heavy valve covers, intake, some trim, some inner fenders, some exhaust manifolds, but you know, jacks, jacks are good. But uh, there's a lot of stuff back here and it's kind of hard deciding what to take and what not to take. Like how many heads really aren't worth anything. <coughs> Two barrels really aren't worth anything. Stuck WCFB. These are early drums. I don't know if it's worth grabbing these or not. These are getting pretty hard to find though. I think that's an Imperial door. I don't know. All right, almost packed up. Still gotta get another torque flight in here, but uh, we're almost done. It's mostly just miscellaneous, but I don't wanna leave the stuff behind. There's a lot of parts books in there and we're gonna get uh, one tire swapped on this four door so we can try to get this out. Our new friend Eric over there, he bought the 465s from me for ridiculously cheap because I want to get rid of them. Uh, but we're going to help him get this out. So we're going to at least get it parallel to the house over here so we can, uh, so it's easier for him to get it out when he needs to get it. So yeah, we're almost done here. Then we're going to head back to Scott's and uh, get the trailer hooked up and head home. It's kind of cool. We can watch from my rear view camera. Uh, technology. I think it's just gonna try to pull this thing sideways, but uh, it's really tight to that building. Turn, baby, turn. We got one. We got one tire on it that holds air. The other one's still flat, but it's nothing for the mighty Cummins. Oh man, it's the bumper's getting pretty bent. <laughs> of course, it kind of already was bent. No problem. Yeah, the. That dog doesn't like uh, Cummins trucks. What he has against me. And unfortunately, on scheduled stop, my right front went flat, and I realized I didn't have tire pressure monitors in my tires. So, time to get that done. But uh, they literally don't have a jack to big enough to jack up my truck because we've got you know a couple thousand pounds in the back, and there's a car in the trailer. But even with the car trailer off the bumper, they still couldn't lift it up. So they broke out some bottle jacks. So I'm gonna be home about six tonight. That's eh, not happening now. Every single time I've gone to Spokane for this, I've hit major traffic. I haven't even left Spokane yet. <sighs> it says a 20 mile, de 20 minute delay. I just want to get home. Hey, that's where I broke my truck new. Bud Cleary in Moses Lake, Washington. Been by here a few times last week. Ah, Jamie's calling card. Grass all over my shop after he drives one of my cars. <laughs> So we're going to start out here. Uh, I'm basically, I, I have a little footage when we back to Spokane to get the rest of the parts. So I'll share that with you guys and then we'll get back into putting this thing together. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this. So the goal with this thing is get the nose wing on it, get it running and do burnouts on my driveway by Friday. So we basically have three days to do that. Today is Wednesday. So stay tuned. It should be fun. Uh, and Jamie from Dead Dodge Garage is doing a companion video to this as well. So if you uh, haven't watched that, I definitely encourage you to watch that. Um, he's kind of doing the mechanical stuff. Uh, Evan and I are going through parts and doing interior and all the auxiliary stuff. And then uh, Trev, who works here at the shop too, he's going to be working on the nose and wing tomorrow. And I'll get some footage of that as well. So uh, again, uh, hope you guys are along for a ride. This one should be fun. Just locking up my trailer for the night. And it really helps if you put the bar across the door before you put the lock on. I'm here to help you guys and give you guys good advice. So I actually have an NOSB body gas tank, but this thing looks pretty good. He must have cleaned this thing out. Even the sending unit looks pretty good. So we're just gonna run this. I just need a seal for that and I haven't found the filler neck for it yet. Yeah, so we gotta start going through boxes here. Unfortunately, when we take something apart at Rocket, we bag and tag everything. On this car, it's all in one giant box. So finding the fasteners is going to be a bit of an issue, but uh, we'll see what we can do. Here's a U-joint strap. Should probably put that with the uh, drive shaft, huh? So, Roadkill does cardboard on a uh, windshield. Well, we don't have a windshield in the Superbird. It's gone, it broke. So what we're gonna do is use the whiteboard to do a running list of what we need and what still needs to be fixed. So, an example, first thing on the list, got the drive shaft, that looks right, but uh, no caps in the U-joints, the they've seen better days. So I'm gonna go ahead and get new U-joints for this. I'm hoping we have some on the shelf. And then, uh, 
we'll replace those because that ain't gonna work. I'm willing to put sketchy in a car, but the no caps is kind of a deal breaker there. So Jamie's changing the exhaust manifolds out. And this is where having a reproduction parts business is real nice because it was all wrong. It was all like bolts and all that goes in the water. You don't want that. So we're gonna do the correct studs, nuts, and sleeves and I'll put the correct 70 manifolds on. So as we're going through hardware here, I'm just trying to like, if I find stuff that's real easy that I can identify to try to put together. So here we go. You jam, you strap, blah, blah, blah. you joint straps. Thank you. Uh, there's three bolts. Why is there always three bolts? Because there's always three bolts. You know how annoying that is? Now I have to find one U joint strap bolt. You really can't say there. that, can you? I got that out. U joint strap bolt. Just takes a couple tries. When you take a car, pout, car apart, I cannot talk today. When you take when you take a car apart, please bag and tag. Trust me, it's for the good of the world. Bag and tag. You know how hard it is it's going to be to go through and find every fastener we need out of this mess of a box. Bag and tag. It's not that hard. It really isn't. Get some Ziploc bags, a sharpie, mark the fasteners that come off the car, and tell me what they are. Because it takes a lot longer to put a car back together if you don't do that. All right, we don't want to lose this box. So that's the uh, corner piece of the Superbird. That's the nose piece, uh, metal top trim. It's all special super bird only stuff. So I'm trying to make a pile. Trev's gonna put that nose together for me tomorrow. That's gonna be his challenge. We're trying to get this all in one pile so we can keep track of it. We have some neat stuff that's uh, not necessarily super bird, but he had a bunch of 65s. Those are NOS seatbelt retractors. Pretty cool. Going on the eBay pile, which is growing fast because I haven't listened to anything on eBay for a while because I've been busy getting super birds and stuff. Yeah, 58 Fury grill and taillights. Those are pretty hard to find. Keep on finding more good stuff. Just found an NOS Roadrunner horn. Those are the original pulleys. They were blasted but never painted, so they're a little rusty. I think that's the right fan for it. We just need to see if we can find the right clutch. But I don't know. We may just keep the original brackets we had. Jamie's storing stuff in my shop. This is kind of cool. Original fuel filter. Especially, I think it's the right part number and everything. That's cool. Lots of good stuff in here. The Christian Brothers bottled Napa, California. It has an old wine cork. Wow. I don't think I've ever seen an NOS one of these before. It's an NOS filler neck. Look at that beauty. Yeah, we're going to put that in. You know, I've got an NOS gas tank. I'm almost tempted just to put the NOS gas tank in, even though this tank's okay. But with the NOS filler neck, wow, that's cool. NOS grommet and filler never seen one before jamie's doing a half-hearted autopsy on this just to make sure it's okay and everything really looks pretty good on it so i think we're okay we're gonna run it so it's only an autopsy when they're dead i think i think we're all right so and what do you call it and um, so what's it called exploratory surgery. there you go exploratory surgery that's yeah good. that's good we're okay jamie's doing exploratory surgery and everything looks okay See, it sounds like this where I got had a parts car. Fortunately, I took a bunch of stuff off this to fix my six-pack car, which is hiding back there. That beige 70, which you can't really see, but kind of. Uh, but this actually has a good filler neck in it, it looks like. Plus, it has the bracket to mount it as well, which is very difficult to find, actually. So I may just end up using this one, because this one actually looks like it's in really good shape. And then we'll just use that one for now. And then I'll just put a repression gasket in um, and just use that other used tank. Here are the original front uh, turn signal lenses. Uh, little known fact, actually, I guess pretty much everybody knows this, but uh, so see the 70 Fury up there? They're basically used 70 Fury front turn signal signals, but these are worth a million dollars because everybody says Superbird. So I see body guys get a little grumpy when people use them on Superbirds because we want them for our Furies. Uh, this is actually the original set. They look really nice. We're going to use these. All right, so Evan is cleaning up our numbers matching AC slides. Gotta clean up the input shaft so it's smooth and everything goes in there nice. And then we found all the shifter rods over here. So we gotta make sure all those are right and will fit. And then put a just a grip shifter on it because that's about the coolest thing ever. Making pretty good progress going through boxes. So this is pretty much stuff we think we think or may or may not be super weird stuff. And then we're trying to get a couple bins of stuff we know isn't. Like there's some 67 from the dog dishes and some other stuff in there. Uh, I got no stuff over here, and nose dams. Oh wow, those are NOS. That's cool, those are NOS Superbird nose parts. 
Oh yeah, there's the uh, gaskets. Wow. NOS, cool. I think those are nose brackets, interior stuff, console, and then all the super hard to find super weird stuff up here. Found this too. 440 Super Commando nameplate. They're actually not making these right now, so they're going for like insane money. Okay, I gotta go through more boxes. That's just kind of miscellaneous. We got a lot of Ford look stuff with the other part, cars and parts. So we're just kind of separating, trying to consolidate a few of these boxes so it's a little more manageable. Um, Cause I need my shop back eventually here. Well, the good news is I found one single box they labeled. It's actually labeled correctly. Let's go to the... the Roadrunner emblems in there, door locks, and that's the back of the trip rail trim. So at least one box is labeled. So unfortunately, when you clear out the state cell like this, you end up with a bunch of junk. This is all boat parts, I mean, fuel gauges, but it's all unmarked. I don't even know what it is. It's definitely not Superbird parts. That's a Stuart Warner fuel gauge. Evan collects fuel gauges. I'll keep these for Evan. But you got to go through every box. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a Magnum 500 center cap that I would have just thrown away. So you got to go through everything. But there's so many like worthless boat parts in here. Of some sort. You just never know what you're gonna find. Yeah, see, there's a temp gauge for something, probably 65 or 66. You don't want to throw that away. So you gotta go through everything, but yeah, gotta go through every box. You like NOS parts? I don't know, all sorts of good stuff. You know, it's tips. Oops. Ah, knock the box over. This is a vacuum poster. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Okay. You know what? Some used tips in there. Right on horn too. Well, that was 32 bucks back when he bought it. It was actually a lot of money back then. Hope it's the right one. A lot of the over-counter ones have the wrong bracket on them. All right, back to more boxes. These things are gross. All right, that's pretty much the end of the day one for me. Um, doesn't really seem like we made much progress today, but uh, we got the motor close to repaired. Evan's got the four speed pretty close. We just need to find the nuts to mount the rods and the bolts to mount the shifter. Um, I went through most of the parts. We had a bunch of stuff over here to go through. Um, that's all the Superbird stuff there. I still gotta go through these boxes. There's a bunch of Superbird and NOS stuff in there that we're gonna need. That's still need to go through. It's all the NOS stripes too, which is kind of neat. Yeah, those are the no stripes. It's actually wing. Um, Wing gaskets, front turn signal lenses, NOS mirror. There's some good stuff in this box. It's a neutral safety wiring. So yeah, still got a few boxes to go through, but I got through most of it today. Yeah, I go through all this stuff too. There's a bunch more NOS stuff back here. So it's like we found most of the Superbird stuff. I don't really see too much missing. So that room's uh, not Superbird. It's this charger right here so all right well that's that's it for me i've got a date night with my wife my kids are at the with my in-laws for the week so i'm gonna take my wife on a date and we'll get back up uh get back going tomorrow so all right that's the end of day one uh, i did a lot of prep work today so we'll uh roll the car in here tomorrow start working on that jm will continue to work on the drivetrain we got to get stuff like the gas tank in start getting the interior together um that's the plan for tomorrow so stay tuned all right, back for day two. Uh, after I left, some stuff magically happened, which is always nice. Jamie got the uh, clutch in flight wheel in, and the uh, bell housing's kind of sitting there. We need to find bolts, which of course we can't find any bolts right now. So uh, Evan has almost got the shifter back together. He's got all the rods on there. He's just trying to adjust the shifter right now. And uh, yeah, uh, now I gotta finish going through parts and see what the rest of what I have over here. Um, Found some more NOS stuff from the mirror, some front turn signal housings, and uh, those are actually wing gaskets, which is kind of a cool piece. Looks like there's a bunch of the engine stuff I've been looking for, so. All right, let's continue to go through parts. This is cool. NOS mirror. Let me open it up. Looks like it's actually an e-body one, which is worth more money, but it's not right for the car. So, yep, I guess that's going to go in the eBay pile. Unless somebody needs an NOS e-body mirror, which there's probably somebody out there who does. All right, separating all the NOS stuff. There's some good stuff in here. Uh, headlight switch, speakers. But the best part is this is like the one super part other than the jack I haven't been able to find is the A-pillar trim. This is super bird only and super duper 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 hard to find. I don't know if this was actually restored or what. Or 
maybe it's an LS, which would also be cool. But yeah, here's the A-pillar trim. This is uh, unique on this car. Here, let me get out of the package. Yeah, so these basically go on the A-pillar to smooth out the drip rail. And there's actually an NOS one here. Amazing. That is freaking cool. I don't think I've ever seen an NOS one before. One fun game I like to play is when stuff's uh, wrapped up in newspaper. See what the date is. It's uh, April 23rd, 1988. It's usually a fairly recent newspaper when they do that. Nice, 19, new 1988 Cherokee. Was 17,292, now 14,321. One dealer, Barton Jeep Eagle. Interesting, they were just Jeep Eagle. They had nothing else in Volvo, apparently. I don't think they're in business anymore. Nissan hard body, ooh, new Ferrari. Cool, it's always fun going through these classifieds and see what else we can find. Oldsmobile. Where's the Dodge? Need to find the Dodge. It's fun going through old classifieds to see what was for sale. Uh, Focus, 70 Monaco, $300 or best offer. 68 Polara, $500 or best offer. Unfortunately, there's really not much cool here, unfortunately. I was hoping for a charger or like a rotor or something, and looks like I'm disappointed. Mmm, mouse poop. I'm trying to get all these really crappy cardboard boxes and put them in a Costco bin so they're a lot more organized and they don't fall apart every time I touch them. But that was a good one. A lot of NOS in it. All right, let's keep on going through bins, see what else we find. Found a horn. I think it's for a boat. I'm pretty sure I'm con contractually obligated to put air through it and see how it sounds like. My ears hurt now. I think I was going to throw these horns in the scrap bin. These are definitely sticking around now. Good advice. If you see a box labeled Superbird parts and you're buying a Superbird, grab that box. Ooh, more tape stripes. More NOS. So this is cool. I don't know if you got Jamie swearing or not, but these are actually uh, NOS stickers. So it's the NOS jack instructions, emissions, and all that stuff. But this is NOS. It's not reproduction. It's actually original NOS stuff. There's a lot of parts here I've never seen before. So this just says wiring. It's actually an NOS engine bay wiring harness. I don't think I've ever seen one of these before, NOS. Uh, they, they do reproduce these and the repos are pretty good, but NOS is NOS. Um, date on it is 1980. So I think he bought the car right before then. I don't know what this is. Let's open it up and find out. All right, let's see what's in this one. Oh, peanuts, my favorite. Huh. What is that? Oh, cool. Washer pump. It's in a newer box though. That's like late 80s. Interesting. I didn't realize the Super Club was selling those at the time. Hey, Evan's got the four speed together. And I feel like we're obligated to show you how this shifts because it's the coolest yeah. shifter ever. It does the stuff. It does stuff, it moves. It's just like rowing a boat. Excellent. Dude, this feels really nice, actually. I'm very impressed with that, considering when Evan started with it. What, yeah. This pivot and reverse were seized. Yep. Yeah, that turned out great. 18 splines. I'm excited. They're bulletproof. Evan took that shifter apart and got it all lubed up, and everything's working great now. <sighs> it's all coming together. Hood latch. Pretty sure it's NOS looking at the finish on there. I think that's right. Definitely going to need that. So, Jamie's seeing if the motor will turn over. Of course it does. Awesome. Does the stuff. Does the stuff. Still finding parts. We found most of the jack stuff in there, but not the scissor jack, but the regular jack. That's a radiator overflow, I believe, which I'm gonna go put over the radiator. License plate bracket that's slightly bent. Uh, those are rain deflectors for the quarter windows. And looks like antenna in here. But uh, honestly, radio's extra for burnout, so this is probably gonna have to wait till later. I have a lot of boat stuff. Gator. I'm guessing that's what that is. Like boat hub cap or something. I don't know. I can't put myself to throw it away. All right. Finally time to get the horse out of the, out of the trailer. Oh, uh, as Chibi would say. Yep. Still super bird. All right. Got her unstrapped. Now it's going to winter down, but the back tires are flat. So we're going to try to put some air in there to make our job easier. I think it's just, I think it's just one flat tire. It's not bad, and it's really tight with the hood over there, but we may have to take the hood out. Okay, I'm going to take the hood out so I can actually get to air back there. All right, I'm loading the Superbird. Now do we give it a bath or not? I got to help push. 
All right, time to reduce the value of the car by 10%, blowing off all the barn fine dust. All right, I at least have to clean the windows so I can actually see out of it. That's an essential part of driving a car is being able to see out of it. Actively losing all that barn findy dust. I don't know. We're about 50-50 whether we're going to wash this thing or not. But I do have to be able to see out of it. That's kind of a requirement. Because then it's really dangerous. I mean, we're going to be driving this thing without a windshield anyway, so... It's all coming together. Looking good. So I think what we're going to do is, as long as it doesn't start raining in the next five minutes, which it might, we're going to run this thing right in here and throw it right in the car. We don't really have room to do anything else. So, <laughs> yeah. Jamie will crawl under there and do the cross member. Jamie always crawls under and does a cross member. That's Jamie's job. Why, yes, Jamie is riding a transmission. <laughs> I might break something. I'm not that heavy. Don't break stuff. Not? More unique Superbird pieces. Those are the side pieces that go under the nose. I still can't believe how nice this nose is. It is really, really nice. These things are always hit. A little bit of surface rust down there, but that's not a big deal. Don't worry about that. But these, are, these have always been hit over the years, and they never get the body work right. This one looks super, super nice. Jamie said he's taking the original fuel line off. Yeah. Wow, original KV hose with the original clamp. That's cool. I mean, but we could try and save it. Yeah, we're not running that. There's I don't no think way. so. No, I, I don't need a fuel leak in my car to burn down. Decided to do a cleanse by fire on the mounts and rat infested boxes. Just said I should have kept the Superbird parts box, but uh, eh, I just want all this stuff going. All right, getting ready to put this thing in. We, uh, I made the executive decision after seeing that the fuel filter was uh, not round anymore. Oil and bit. filter. Oil filter, whatever. <laughs> Oil filter. He always corrects me, it's so rude. Uh, yeah, so we're basically just gonna roll this thing in and put it in. We took the lower pulley off just for clearance issues because it's a lot of times, this is when, especially when you have a four pulley like that, that's obviously not correct for this car, it'll hit the core support going in. We don't want hit the core support. Trying to do a few things before we put the motor in. And I know uh, last time I tried to tighten up the, the pedal bolts with the engine in it, I had to basically do it from, from underneath the car. So now we're gonna do it right now before the motor's in. Make it easier. Set up pretty good. Another top tip here that uh, Evan figured out long ago. When, when you're trying to do this, uh, use a ratchet strap like that that kind of holds the tail shaft up a little bit. Cause otherwise it tilts way too far down and it's kind of a pain to get in. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we're gonna drop. Let's have a manual and steering and no booster. It's about as easy as it gets. Yep, thumbs up from Trev. Oh, yeah. Jamie, Jamie didn't die. Yeah. Looking good. We have a motor and a Superbird, and it's a force. Trev and Joanne are making wing car things happen. Right. Joanne, who's our favorite person in the world right now because she brought us Taco Bell. Love that meat. Putting the uh, wing braces in, and then uh, gonna do tail lights and extensions to make it look like a car. And then of course the spoiler, because it's not a super without the spoiler. Jamie's always the go under the car guy. It's appreciative. Although I just, <laughs> although it looks like he just lost all of his change in his phone, but you know. coming out of like a crackerjack box. <laughs> <laughs> all right, time to go up on the lift. I'd just like to say here around here at Rocket. Lift don't lie. We get a good look underneath this thing and see how she really is, but I see nothing on this car that scares me. And we're gonna tighten down the tranny cross member, then probably go right back down and start working on stuff. We just wanna get a good look underneath this thing and just see what we got. This is kinda cool, original Dana 60. It's kinda hard to see there, but it's, uh, so there's a eight digit number there with a dash that tells you what the assembly was, which is 70 V body with three fours and a, 10 inch rear brakes. Cause if you've got disc brakes, you got 10 inch rear brakes and every Superbird got disc brakes. It's kind of cool. The date code there is a uh, 11, 19, nine. So uh, November 19th of 1969, which is perfect for the production of the car. It was built on November 30th, but it might've been built a little late. Uh, there's the used limited slip tag and the three, five, four Dana tag right there. Very cool. Love originality and that kind of stuff. 
Looks like he probably did brakes on this after, but uh, they haven't sit in a while. We'll see if the brakes work or not. Yeah, looking underneath this thing, it's really, really clean. Um, I think they did some trunk pan work and that was kind of ugly over there. But other than that, this thing's really clean. Yeah, they lapped that right there. So for whatever reason, it had some trunk rust when they did it. But I'm pretty sure that tab means the quarter panel was original there. I don't think that's been touched, but they definitely did a patch back there and they didn't do a great job. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's no accident damage. Like everything looks really solid. Frame rails look good. Like no worries whatsoever back here. The paint going off. Uh, we need to install some rear shocks on this thing so it's not bouncing all over the place. Jamie's tightening up the training mount. Uh, torsion bars are in there. Right, That's the right torsion bar. Excellent. Yeah, it looks looks uh everything's really nice underneath here. Sway bar. It's way too long. It's got the correct skid plate because this would have had a seven quart pan originally with the 440 HP. Yeah, the sway bar is all there. Looks like the guy did the front end at some point because uh, he didn't have, didn't have cotter pins on those. So that was done at some point. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with this thing. It looks really, really nice. So we have Evan going through rear end stuff and uh, that's pretty cool. 10769. These are really, really hard to find decoder ones. They came with the car, the original. They're going back on. So remember, when you have a car that's been 100% apart and hasn't been put together, check the fluids. I checked the rear end diff and it was pretty much gone. And remember to add genuine Mopar slip lube, lube slip lube. additive friction modifier. When only Mopar will do. Picked up a bunch of these at a Mopar dealer a while ago and this stuff's actually quite expensive. This is why it takes so long to put a car together. Evan and Jamie have been working on this for at least half an hour now. There's some gunk on the inside of this yoke and it will not go inside the back of the transmission. Living the life right now, Jamie? This is what I signed up for. So we we're gonna put it back down on the ground and start working on top side stuff, but uh, we just decided we're gonna try to get as much of the underside stuff done as we can. So now we're doing the gas tank. We gotta get the new grommet in there. Uh, it has a 3 8 sending unit, which comes with a factory return line, which for, some, for whatever reason, the line's not on the car. We're not sure why, so we're just gonna plug the return line. It doesn't really matter anyways. And then there's a vent line there that goes up in the trunk that connects right there. Uh, Jamie went through and got the Z-bar in with all the bushings and the linkage and all that stuff. I think we still have to do the down rod, but uh, all that's there now. So we're getting pretty close on this thing. So the goal for tonight is to hear this thing run in the car. So we'll see if we make it that far. We don't need much to do that. Uh, we don't need cooling system. We don't need exhaust. We just want to hear it run in the car off gas. And if we do that, that'll be a great accomplishment. And then tomorrow, we'll try to put it together so we can drive it. Check this out of the trailer earlier and we left it in the grass. That would have been bad since it was about to rain all night. Uh, why does stuff always get caught in my shoe? No matter what it is. Um, but yeah, let's get the original VIN on it. Three speaker dash for A-Track. We got the dash cluster over there. It's got the four speed reverse switch. Looking good. It's not too cut up, so that shouldn't be a problem. All right, gas taken, Z-bar done. So now we gotta start starting on top side stuff. Uh, needs a carburetor to run. Still need the down bar on the transmission. Alternator, all that fun stuff. It doesn't really need an alternator to run, but it'd be nice. We also do not have an engine harness. Nice. Which we need to find. Put the battery tray in too. That should be body color, but we don't care in this instance. These are the interior samples for the carpet. Do you want the Sunfire, the uh, the European Rust, or the Oxblood and Sea Foam? Can I go with none of the above? No, the, the it's got to be one of the one of the three. <laughs> well, at least he covered the seats. They actually survived pretty well. Although there's peanut shells in this plastic, which just like everything else had some mice in it. Although it doesn't smell that mousey, actually. It could definitely be worse. The 55 Imperial I picked up at there was, oof. man, you open that door and mouse house. Taking part the interior. This thing's really nice. I gotta look at the dash and see how many miles are on this thing because it was only 15 years old when it was taken apart. I think it might have been even less than that. I kinda wonder what the miles are. Let's go look at the dash. Now I'm curious. Yeah, mice didn't get in here too bad. All the interior stuff's kinda nicely placed in here actually, which is good. 81,000 miles. Yeah, I mean, look at the condition of the car. I bet that's probably right. Uh, 81 when it was parked. 81 about 15 years on a Superbird. Yeah, that's about right. That's kind of cool too. Uh, the charger, the clock was always standard. The TikTok tack was optional. On a Roadrunner, even the clock was optional. 
Yeah, still got the vacuum switch back there. That's cool. Circuit board's broke, but I may have to see if I can find another board for that. So uh, working with Jamie's interesting. It's basically like working with an 80 year old man because he can't hear anything because he lost all of his hearing from shows and working on cars and power tools. But the funny thing is I'm completely across the shop doing how many miles were on this thing and he heard that. I don't know how he heard that because I have a conversation like this far away from him and he can't hear anything. I don't understand how this works. It's an ongoing problem. It's selective hearing. That's true too. Yeah, maybe he's just ignoring me. Maybe that's the problem. All right, got all the interior out. Mice have been having a good time in here. We're just, that might be original carpet. The insulation underneath is definitely not original. So we're just going to toss all of this because it's completely disgusting and vacuum it all out and start from zero. It probably just won't have carpet for a little while. And of course they glued it down because why wouldn't they exactly? Uh, floor pans look pretty good. Uh, the only saving grace with this is usually when you see this, it gets wet and sits there forever and rusts out. Uh, good part is this car was inside the whole time. So it looks like everything survived pretty well. Um, I don't see any rust in the floor pans, which is good. All right, Levin called me off for saying that the floor pan looked fantastic and we hadn't pulled up all the insulation yet. Uh, it looks good after all the insulation is up. Of course, we looked underneath too. We didn't see any rust. So but yeah, it looks good. I mean, a little bit of mouse house issues. So break out the vacuum here and I don't see any reason why I can't put the back seat in. And I don't think I'm gonna put carpet in for now. I don't think I have a four speed carpet and I don't have the time or patience to actually cut that. And you don't need carpet to do burnouts, right? Uh, Bell stem extension, that's kind of cool. You would be surprised kind of how many parts are extra for doing programs. Right. We're reaching the end of day two. Fortunately, Jamie has to leave. I actually don't have kids or a wife tonight, which is nice. So I'm actually going to keep on working on this after Jamie leaves. You're going to have the interior done by the time I get back tomorrow? I'll at least have it unmoused. Okay. How about that? Okay. I may put the rear seat in. Well, we'll see how far I get it. I don't think I'm going to put the door panels in unless you think that's necessary. Necessary? No. I'm probably not going to put the door panels in. Um, that just seems extra and, frankly extra that's not the right word for it all right but saying that jamie wants to see this thing run tonight so we're going to dump a little gas in it and see if it'll pop and then we'll uh continue on tomorrow little trick i've shown you on the channel before but on the edelbrock carter carbs you put gas right down there and you actually fill the bowl up so you don't have to have the fuel pump so it'll run for you know five or ten seconds off what's ever in the bowls um and you don't need a fuel supply. So we do have fuel, we do have a supply, um, but we haven't put any gas in the tank yet. All that's hooked up, but we're gonna worry about that tomorrow. Isn't this? Sure. We have a running super bird. Tomorrow, burnouts. All right, I'm mostly demoused. At least got all the mouse poop out. It really doesn't smell that bad in here. So uh, now I'm gonna put the trunk divider in and the package tray and the rear seat. So it kind of looks like a car back there. So we uh, already have a broadcast sheet for this car, but one place you always wanna look is the back seat, the bottom and the top. You find them there a lot. You also find them below the front seats. Another place people don't know where to look is behind the bucket seats too. I've actually had really good luck finding broadcast sheets under seats back here. So I will unscrew those in a minute as soon as I get the back seat back in. Trev cleaned out and laid out some super parts over here. They look really good. Um, as I said, we're hoping to get the nose together tomorrow because what's the point in doing a burnout in a Superbird if it doesn't look like a Superbird? So we're definitely gonna try to put the nose on tomorrow. We'll see how far we make it, but that's the goal. All right, Trev's putting the spoiler on. So uh, if you don't know, this is kind of how these go together. So it's, uh, it's a little bit dark in here, but there's basically a brace down there. It's welded to the floor pan, which they did a really lousy job of doing, but you know, uh, the brace go up top and there's another brace. And we're gonna fix here. that. Yeah, we're gonna fix that, yes. There's another brace underneath here that goes underneath the quarter panel. And then it just has long studs that go through the, quarter, through the top of the quarter panel like that. It's really pretty easy. It's long studs on here. Unfortunately, they did a terrible job of hardware, so we basically had to get some generic hardware to make this work because there was no other way to do it because we didn't have the original hardware. So, but it is an original wing, it looks good. And you know what? Trevor's trying to get me to paint it, but I'm just gonna leave a primer. I think it looks better that way. 
More of a rat rod, super bird. There you go, Joe Dirt. Joe Dirt. Yeah, only hard part is the, the wing studs go through, but you gotta line it up with that bracket and they never quite line up. That's the only hard part. We're getting close to having a complete wing for a wing car. All right, here's the end of day two. We have a Superbird wing. Can't really have a wing car without a wing. Uh, got a lot accomplished today. Engine's in, we got to run for a minute. Uh, I was gonna put the rear seats in, but then I decided I wanna put seat belts in. So, um, and they're still in the back of my truck for my second run I made to Spokane. So yeah, super happy with our progress today. We got one more day tomorrow to do burnouts. I mean, that's the goal. I don't see why we can't do it tomorrow. All right, uh, we'll see you again in the morning. All right, welcome to day three of Superbird build. Unfortunately, Mother Nature is uh, not really cooperating with us this morning. It's supposed to kind of rain all day and we don't have a windshield for the Superbird. So, uh, I mean, that's not gonna stop us from doing burnouts this afternoon, but uh, did I mention we're doing burnouts? Because I said burnouts about a hundred times in this video. Burnouts, burnouts, burnouts. Uh, the thing is, I'm trying to put the interior bed together. Unfortunately, I need seat belts to put in before I put the rear seat in. And uh, I was really not planning on unloading this today, but uh, I kind of need that exhaust. And there's a few parts still buried in the truck from the last trip we took over there. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna see how much I can get out of this by myself because nobody else is here yet. Because uh, my guys don't like to really work that early in the morning. I'm definitely not getting these power flights out by myself, so I'm gonna need some help to get those. But uh, I'm gonna see if I can make a dent in this by myself, see how far I can make it, and uh, see if I can find those seatbelts, because uh, I'm kinda needing them for the car. All right, guys aren't in yet, so uh, next thing I'm gonna do is, so I've found the seatbelts, but I'm gonna put the uh, throttle pedal in. Uh, and then the other thing I was going through is, we found a bunch of exhaust up in the attic. Again, I, I can't emphasize this enough. We're not doing an OV restoration on this. We're, just trying to get it running and see if it has exhaust. So he had this kind of generic Walker exhaust upstairs. Well, I don't know what the interchange is on this or, or what it fits, but the flanges look right and it's two and a half. So I'm just crossing my fingers that this is the right stuff. Um, the hard part is, and a lot of people don't know this, is they, on 6970, they changed the angle of the driver HP exhaust manifold. So I'm really hoping it's not 69. Um, this is also supposed to have an H pipe on a 440 originally. And obviously this is not an H pipe. Um, there is a chance I may have one next door in my pile. But we're gonna see if this generic exhaust works first. So uh, I'm gonna get a few more things out of the truck and then uh, get her back on the lift. And then we'll uh, see if the exhaust fits. The other thing I'm gonna try to do this morning is these wheels and tires are awful. That one doesn't even hold air. And I'm actually like, I'm willing to do burnouts on old tires, but I can see through the tire on both of these. And I'm afraid they're going to fly apart and hit the quarter panel. I've had that happen before and it's not pretty. So uh, we actually found these up in the attic. They are factory 15 by 7 rally wheels. So I think I'm going to try to put these on this morning as well. It'll make the car look way better and the whole there. They were empty yesterday. They're a little cracked. They put air in them yesterday and they still seem to be holding air, which is good. Um, and yes, I know these are 71 caps. Um, they're dark argent instead of light argent. And then the trim rings are brushed, not polished, which is also 71. But in this case, I don't care. So we're gonna put them on. They are real 15.7 trim rings though. You always see these. You can't buy the correct seven inches anymore. They're six and a half. So there's always a big gap down there. That one's nice and tight. That means it's a factory seven inch trim ring, which is Pretty cool, those are extremely hard to find. If you don't have a lift, I highly recommend getting one. All right, we're gonna put the uh, throttle pedal in now. Um, things like speedo cable, they're extra right now, but uh, do you need throttle cable? So just two of these little serrated nuts right there and throttle cables in. And then I'm gonna see if the exhaust fits and then work on rear shocks. All right, nuts tightened. Now we're gonna see if these head pipes fit. Cross your fingers. Okay, so I don't have this installed, but uh, it sure looks like it fits to me. It's in the ballpark, which is good. That means we can actually have exhaust on this and mufflers and all that fun stuff. Yeah, I got it lined up in here. Bolt holes lined up. Uh, using a tranny jack makes this easier, especially if you're trying to do it by yourself. But yeah, do I say that lines up to me? Maybe he's got to figure out the back pipes. There's a mid pipe here and mufflers. We'll see if they have fit. All right, time to change wheels. Took that one off. And uh, I might as well just 
peep at the brakes so I got everything out here. I think everything's new in here, but the problem is it's 30 years old, so the uh, rubber doesn't always survive. Uh, day and end. But uh, pretty much everything else is the same on these. The bearings are the same. There's a uh, lot of stuff interchanges on these. Most of the Dana 60s are built for trucks. They're full floater, so these are obviously not. Yep, everything's new back here, so that's good. Don't have to worry about that. It's probably shoes that I actually work to. It's interesting, the, the wear pattern on there a little bit on top. Um, but yeah, everything's good. Drum looks good. It's got a little bit of surface rusty stuff, but I'm not gonna worry about that. That'll clean up. That'll clean up nice. When you're doing burnouts, it cleans up brakes really good. I haven't mentioned we're doing burnouts. Always a good idea, kind of while you're here to uh, clean up the threads a little bit with a metal brush. I mean, only there are only two lug nuts on here, so if some of these are a little rusty, it's just good to clean up those threads, especially like that one. That one's really rusty. You don't want to do the threads to the work. You want to get that cleaned up as best you can. And don't forget, left hand side, left hand thread. Uh, got some, I don't know where I got these, but quarter 20 left hand. Perfect. Fronts look good too. It's like new pads. This is the original rotor too. So see right there, it's a two piece. So the hub's different from the, the rotor. Uh, that means it's an original one. It's actually, a, uh, they call those wide mouth calipers too. Those are original for 70. Um, those are getting pretty hard to find. So when this is rebuilt, you can find all that stuff now. Not so much. Ooh, that's fluid on there though. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's really not good. That means the caliper's leaking. You know, honestly, looking at it, I think it is. Well, we're not going for a long drive with this thing, but uh, yeah, that's gonna need to be addressed. Caliper's gonna have to be rebuilt. That's a little bit of a bummer. All right, back into the horde because uh, the uh, dash cluster we have for the Superbird, the pins are broken off. So I just wanted to find a new uh, circuit board. I figured it's just easier to change the circuit board. We're certainly not changing the dash cluster because it's 81,000 original miles. So that one's got one that's a little bit loose on the left. So might have Jamie do that. But uh, we're trying to kind of divide and conquer right now. So Evan's doing shocks. I'm doing wheels and tires. They're in the exhaust next. And then uh, Jamie just got here and he's doing the dash. Jamie's making the dash look too nice, which... Might as well. We're here. Doesn't have the uh, standing bird on it though. I thought there's supposed to be a bird there. Maybe it was taken off over the years. I thought all the roadrunners got that on the dash in 70. Maybe I'm wrong. Just spent far too much time looking for this. At least they were nice enough to keep the, the bolts, but I'm putting the rallies on. I gotta put the caps on too. I can't just have one not have a cap. That just doesn't make sense at all. So when uh, Jamie found the rallies up in the attic, we, uh, we put the trim ring back on so we wouldn't lose it, but I forgot to see what actually the date code was on these. I'm really curious if these are original 71 15 by sevens. So I'm just gonna pop this trim ring off because, I don't know, just because I'm OCD and wanna look at it. And I can show you how to identify a rally wheel. All right, quick tutorial on how to decode a rally wheel. I'm sorry, this is kind of hard to see because it's got some serious metallic paint on there. But uh, so right there, it says M1, which is mean motor wheel plant one, and zero is the year, so 1970. And then that's the month. Uh, which is May, and the day first. So it is May 1st of 1970, which would be the uh, late in the 1970 model year. The 71 model year didn't start till August. I mean, I guess theoretically this could have put on one of those, but uh, probably not. So that's how you date code. And then there's a part number behind the valve stem, which is pretty much impossible to see, but it starts with 294, and I think it ends, I think it's 055 on a 15 by seven. So you can look up that part number and tell. But yeah, there's a real 1970, model year 15 by seven rally wheel, which is super, super hard to find. Um, especially when they're this nice. I don't see any dings or dents in them or no curb hits. That's pretty cool. So uh, this car, the Super originally came with 14. So these are absolutely, these are not the original wheels to the car, um, but you could have gotten 15 by seven rallies. And honestly, I'm just putting these on because it's what I got and they look really good on Super Bird with the 15s. Evan just made this point and it's actually a really interesting point. This system fits amazingly well. Um, there's several aftermarket companies we've used for exhaust and they don't fit at all. Like this is like generic parts store walker pipes that were probably made in the eighties. I can't believe how well this stuff fits. I mean, it's supposed to be an H pipe, blah, blah, blah. We're just trying to get functional exhaust on this right now, but it's pretty amazing that, uh, you know, parts store stuff from the 30 years ago, how well it fits because the new stuff that's supposed to fit these cars, that's like a $1,200, $1,500, that's like supposed to be direct bolt-on, usually takes us like a day to put on because none of it actually fits that well. So yeah, if you can find some walker part numbers, 1875.
I'm guessing O'Reilly's doesn't have that anymore. If there's anything more satisfying than crossing stuff off a list, I don't know what it is. Yeah, I think it's good progress. Little tranny. All right, probably gonna add a few things to this list. But yeah, we're making good progress. Because I can't stand it, I'm gonna open up the back of these and see if there's another broadcast sheet in here. Because I love doing that. Mm, can't quite see. I have to break out the flashlight. Hold on. Unfortunately, no, no broadcast sheet. We're gonna check the other one too. Because you never know. Because more broadcast sheets is good. All right, let's check the other one. No, doesn't look like it. Oh well, gotta check. And it's just two screws, so it's pretty easy to check. If you're gonna take it out, you have to take the whole back panel off, but just to check, you can kind of peek. Jamie's getting the dash back together. Looks much better, a little cleaned up. Gauges actually look really good. Just a little pitting on the switches. Not much we can do about that. The uh, radio bezel, that's for an eight track, which is unique. I uh, had some really, really grimy stuff on it, but he got it pretty clean. So this is looking good. Going to give the seats a little once over. Usually what I do is I just start with glass cleaner because you just want to get the big stuff off. And you know, if I was going super anal, I'd use the Costco rags, but these work fine, just paper towels. So they're not too rough on it. And then I'll uh, use some vinyl cleaner on it. Again, I'm not going for OE here, but I don't really want to sit where mice have been pooping. So I want to clean that up. So I succumbed to peer pressure and got premium instead of regular, even though we're not going to really be uh, like doing much with this. And uh, yeah, I just, uh, our local gas station, and I love living where I live. But uh, we only have one gas station that's reasonably close, and they're ridiculously high in prices. This was five seventy five for a gallon of premium, whereas regular in town is three seventy five right now. So yeah, but whatever. Bitch wine, bitch wine. Don't, don't, put it you in. Only get a gallon? Don't put that in there, man. <laughs> so we thought we had all the parts off that four forty engine when it was running because it has a weird AC setup, but the fan hits the alt for some reason. I don't know why, and it's got a dual pulley on it so and it's a single fill alternator so i need a dual fill alternator for the 70 electron ignition and single pulley and we got an nos one right here or reman uh, nos reman whatever all right jamie's got the dash ready all the gauges work all the lights work headlight switch was not working so we got that working so we're uh, almost ready to put that in he's just cleaned up the glove box door we got to find the fasteners for the dash okay i don't know who had this set up on this car but it's really dumb so you got the throttle cable it has to go there when the inside that interferes with the linkage. I don't know what they're doing. There's supposed to be a Edelbrock adapter, which we happen to have a few of, to do the throttle cable properly. So that's what I'm going to do. At least we don't have to worry about kick down on this one because four speed. All right, that's much better. I'm not convinced this throttle cable's right, um, but at least it's in the right position now. Uh, and note, this is automatic, not stick, but uh, it doesn't matter for our application. We're just gonna make this work. All right, now the return springs line up. And the throttle cable should line up right here. And everything looks like it's right and it should work. I thought this was kind of interesting. I've never seen this before. It's a Mopar branded radiator cap. Safeguard, and I guess that's a pressure release, I think. Uh, it says it's three, five, 17, 16 pound system. Um, yeah, I've never seen that before. It must be a Mopar accessory catalog thing. It was actually on the radiator when we found it. Insane. All right, dash in. We're working wow. on some wiring under the hood. Unfortunately, we do not have an engine wiring harness. I have an NOS harness that I don't want to use on this yet, um, just because I don't want to damage it. So I'm about to go in the back room and see if I can find something close. What do you think the chances of finding one are? There are 10 back there and they're all bad. Well, that's kind of depressing. Well, I can make one. <laughs> so back in the horde with many many wiring harnesses and she found this one all taped together i think it's out of a charger but uh i think this is the one we need although i don't see the electronic ignition connector so it might not be the dual filled one uh, i gotta double check otherwise it looks good so i found a harness that's 69 but i found a 70 harness so i think we're just gonna try to splice it really the main difference is the voltage regulator it goes from the point style single field alternator to the dual field electronic voltage regulator. So uh, I'm pretty sure Jamie can fix this and we're just gonna make it work. So everybody's doing essential stuff. You know, Evan's putting door latches in so the doors can actually close and not pop open. Jamie's wiring the engine bay and all that. I'm gonna put a BP horn on here because it's a Roadrunner. Most important part of the car. 
Me me. Well, it does something sometimes. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Me me. It does. Yes. Nice. Turns over the key. Excellent. We have a dash, a steering column, a shifter, and a seat. We are so close. It's all coming together. Shifter. All right. So now we're going to put the hood on and the nose and then turn up. All right. Jeez, that looks heavy, guys. Is it heavy? Yes, it is. Kind of. Okay, don't hit the Daytona motor with the Superbird nose. Yeah. And there are multiple obstacles. Yeah, we probably should have cleaned up in front of the car first, huh? Step right in front of you. There you go. It's not full. All right, I am going to help mount this super heavy, awkward thing. Watch the training. You're good, you're good, you're good. Some tools. And slowly. Almost there. It's going to be a super bird. All right, hood procured from the back shop uh, where we're storing it so it didn't get damaged. Uh, Jamie's putting on the escutcheons. Which is apparently what they're called. <laughs> they get really bad when I say it that way. And then hood pins are already on the car. Hood on, and then I think we're good to go. Trev is putting the corner nose pieces on right now. We're not going to have taillights and a few other things, but uh, it doesn't really matter that much. All right, hood escutcheons on. Although we didn't put the lanyards on because. We're just not gonna do that right now. A little bit of paint loss in the back there from the previous paint job. <laughs> Trev's trying to put the corner pieces on, then hood on, and then burnouts. It's still raining, so this should be interesting. I think all the barn dust is gonna get washed off outside here. But I guess we'll see. All right, hood on, one table out of the way. And Jamie wants to check the timing. So we haven't actually fired it up off the gas tank yet. So we're gonna do that and see what it sounds like. We got full exhaust on it too. Turns off the gas tank! Yay! Yeah. Thank you, Trev. Nope. That was a good sound. Yeah, we checked for leaks. It doesn't want to idle, so we're trying the rag trick where you put the rag over it until it dies and try to suck out the passengers. You bump the idle speed a little bit. The idea was to put the nose on. Alright, well, we have to go through this car. Okay, safe cylinder. Jamie's complaining about how long the nose is, is. It's really hard to tune that way. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm pretty pleased with myself right now. It runs! We're about to go outside, I'm gonna drive around the yard. I love it. Careful turning, man. You're feeling the wheel can hit the fender. Wow, I'm just blown away. First off, just want to thank my team at Rocket. Uh, these guys are awesome. Uh, we did the impossible. I mean, I was gonna, I was gonna take a week to get this thing running and do burnouts, and we ended up doing it in three days. It's just amazing. Uh, Evan's amazing. Like he's just kind of our do everything guy. Trev was great. Got the nose on, the wing on. He's my detail guy. Um, of course, Jamie from Dead Dodge Garage. You know, he's our mechanic. He does great work. Um, I'm just, I'm just so excited about this. I can't believe I have a run, running Superbird. It's just so, so cool. Um, I'm just so excited about this right now. And we did this all in three days. Can you believe that? This thing was sitting in a garage in Spokane, Washington, two weeks ago. 
It was sitting there since 1984. Just a dead car. And now it's a runner driver. There's nothing that gives me more pleasure in this world than getting a car running. This car was dead in a garage and now it's a running driving superbird. How cool is that? I am just so excited about this right now. Um, obviously there's still a lot more to do on this car. They look really goofy without the, without the nose stickers. Um, obviously windshield, you know, door handles, taillights, side markers. There's still a lot more to do on this thing to get it to be a safe runner driver. But, uh, but how great is this? It's a running car. And it's just, it's great. It's great. So just want to thank everybody for watching. This is Tom from Rocket Restorations, and we will talk to you soon.